Good evening, everyone. It's hard to believe that it was a year ago when I sat in this very place and recorded a video message to everyone, just as our parish, as our state, um, the country, and the entire world was just shutting down. And I mentioned in that video that we are going to have to be home for quite a while, but none of us imagined that we would still be here a year later feeling the effects from this pandemic. Uh, but during that video, I asked everyone to please stay home and to take care of yourselves. And by God's grace, you did. And I'm very thankful and I'm very proud of our parish that you did take care of yourselves and that we have not lost any of our regular parishioners, even though all of us know people that have been touched by the virus. Many of us have lost people in our extended families um, and people that we know and love to the virus and we continue to pray for our own Nick Martin who contracted the virus in a nursing home and we continue to pray for the repose of all those souls who have lost their lives to their pandemic. When the world shut down you have to remember it was because we weren't sure exactly the what we needed to do to stem the spread of this virus. It was very infectious and we weren't sure exactly how to control it. But as we learned exactly how it spread and what we needed to do, we started to implement precautions and the world began to reopen slowly. And we were able to reopen as a parish and welcome people back to in-person services. Now, I know that some people were uh, a little unhappy with the fact that we had to implement those precautions even within our church services. But our parish reopening team was very dedicated to making sure that at the end of this pandemic, everyone would have been kept safe. And we were very dedicated to making sure that our parish would not become a place where the virus would spread. And by God's grace, it hasn't been. And again, I'm very proud and thankful for everyone that worked to make sure that that would happen, and especially for all of you, because you've done what you had to do, and you took the precautions that you had to out of love for one another so that we could keep everyone safe and we would all be brought to get here together again at the beginning of this next Great Lent. Last year, Lent was a difficult time because we had to learn to do something that we really hadn't done before which is worship online. And for worshiping online, that means we had to learn how to worship separated from one another, which is different from our understanding of what worship is. But hopefully that time that people have spent away has made everyone feel the longing for gathering together as the body of Christ together in worship with one another. This Lent, we are blessed that the church is open for all of the services. And even though the services will still be live streamed and you can participate online, I encourage everyone to make the effort, if you feel safe, to participate in the services in person. And we've done everything possible to make sure that those services will be kept safe. Hopefully, if you haven't participated in years past in the weekday services of Great Lent, hopefully last year you had a chance to experience what those services were services were like from the couch in your living room at home and hopefully you've seen how beautiful those services were and just as hundreds of people did who joined on and watched and this year I hope that everyone having a knowledge of what the services are like you will be drawn to come and to participate in those services in person Either way, whether you come in person or you still continue to worship online, I hope that everyone has a chance to experience the great depth of meaning that these services add to our journey of preparation for Pascha. And we speak of Lent as a time of joyful sadness. It's sad because we contemplate our separation from God, which we brought about because of our own selfishness and our own sinfulness. But at the same time, we're joyful because we're heading towards a celebration of the resurrection and Christ's ultimate victory over sin, evil, and death, and the ultimate forgiveness of every one of our sins so that we can once again come back into union with him. And that experience of the mixed feelings of joy and sadness take on an extra special meaning this year. Uh, when we lament the fact that we're still not able to live our lives in a fully normal way and we aren't able to come and fill the church 
to its normal capacity, yet we still find ourselves even more joyful that throughout all of this, the church is here for us, and we're able to partake of the hope and the joy that the church offers, even in the midst of a troubled world, just as we are able to through every challenges, every challenge that we face as a parish and as a community. So Lent begins officially tomorrow at sundown, and it happens during the service of the Vespers of Forgiveness. In better times, we gather together and we embrace one another at the end of the service, and everyone has an opportunity to greet everyone else in the parish and to ask for forgiveness personally. As we start our 40-day journey through Great Lent, the Church encourages us to get rid of all the baggage that we carry in all of our relationships with one another so that we can go through this journey fully joyful of the knowledge of the resurrection that we are approaching. This year, we're going to offer our forgiveness with one another simply by our presence and being there with one another in the church. As as I said, we are still going to be streaming the services, and I imagine that many people will still be watching online. And if you are watching at home, I hope you take advantage of the chat both on YouTube and on Facebook, and use that chat as an opportunity to express your wishes to everyone for... Um, your wishes for a beautiful and profitable Lent, but also an opportunity to again ask for and to receive forgiveness from one another. And at this time, I'd like to ask everyone personally to forgive me for anything that I have done that have offended anybody in any way, or if I have failed to minister to you in any way. And I ask that God will have mercy on every one of us. It's during this service um, of the Vespers of Forgiveness, as I said, that Lent actually starts. And it's beautiful how in the middle of the service, the lights are dimmed, all the church's vestments are changed to purple, and we start off on this journey through Great Lent together. As we start off on the journey, I truly hope that a large number of us will be together. I hope that everyone has the opportunity to participate somehow in that Vespers of Forgiveness tomorrow night and also throughout Great Lent, simply because you all earned it. You've done everything to make sure that this parish is safe and you've done everything that you need to do to keep this parish well by taking care of yourselves so that all of these worship services can continue. And I hope that everyone has an opportunity to experience the joy of these services Again, how do you know that these services are truly joyful and they are truly uh, meaningful and uplift us and give us the strength to carry on? How do we know? Exactly by the same way, uh, by the same message that Christ gave to his holy apostles. He told them, come and see. I pray that everyone will indeed come and see. May God bless you as all of us take... um, take advantage of the opportunities that we will have to gather and to worship together in this sacred place of the church and in the presence of the creator of the universe. And that's an incredible privilege. May God continue to give our parish strength and to keep all of us strong, not only as we approach the holy resurrection, but as we live the joy of that resurrection in our life, in our families, and as a parish. May God bless you all. May it be a beautiful, blessed, and profitable Lent. Amen.